Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and you might recall an awful lot of rumours concerning dual Polaris 10 graphics cards. They were doing the rounds several months ago, and they just didn't seem to stop. But, of course, we never actually saw any card emerge with the light of day. But it would appear that a card is actually going to be utilising this architecture, and it is none other than the Radeon Pro Duo. Now, just so we're all clear, this is a professional focused card. In other words, it's for cards for video editors, image editors, that type of thing. So it's not necessarily something you're going to be want to play Quake on. However, the specifications of the GPU are very impressive. It is, of course, essentially two RX 580s or 480s pretty much tied together, but with a slightly lower core clock at just 1243. But memory has seen a significant increase. It now has 32 gigabytes of GDDR5, that is 16 gigabytes per GPU. And what be the performance? Well, the peak performance is 11.45 teraflops, which is, well, just kind of bonkers, really. The card won't see an introduction into the marketplace until the end of May, and it's expected to cost around a thousand-ish US dollars. So this type of performance will, of course, be for color correction using black magic. Uh, 3D video stitching, uh, especially for like 360 video stitching, uh, virtual reality um, work, uh, if you want to utilize a lot of 3D work in say Blender, um, also 8K authoring, if you perhaps want to use a lot of uh, Adobe Premiere CC 8K authoring, which is becoming more common now, especially with um, the next generation of video cameras in films and movies. In other words, this is like for, you know, high-end work. But it's quite interesting from our point of view as a gamer for a couple of reasons. The first is it does tell us the answer that we've been, well, searching for for a while. What the hell is going on with, you know, the dual cards? So there were some rumours, just in case you're not too familiar with them, that essentially we were going to be seeing, like, um, well, I guess back then it would be the RX 480 times 2 or whatever you ended up wanting to call it. Most folks assumed it was going to be the 490, and it was going to actually act as kind of the the stopgap between the Polaris architecture and Vega. However, obviously that just wasn't the case. We we never saw this card emerge, and despite the fact that a few benchmarks here and there uh, popped out, there was no actual, you know, uh, silicon or anything else that actually really came of it. The second thing we can take away from this is that AMD are once again really focusing on the professional market. AMD for some time, of course, have been pushing the Duo series, but it's becoming increasingly obvious that the company is trying to expand um, their product offerings to the next generation, because previously they were all utilizing Fiji, which obviously had a series of problems, particularly on the memory side of things. So essentially AMD are basically updating its entire product line. Now, a number of people have also started to question, well, how the hell is this going to affect anything with Vega? Like, is this pushing back Vega? Is that something to be concerned with? Probably not, quite honestly. Like, look how long Duo um, was out with Fiji when Polaris was available. You know, the, Polaris had been out, and obviously I'm not being exact in time frame here, but um, the first demos of the uh, back encapsulation, the first demos of the... Um, Polaris architecture and when they were first discussing it they also were discussing the um, Pro Duo which once again utilized the Fiji architecture so in other words there is definitely a lag a disconnect between the professional market and also their uh, high-end desktop for let's say gaming so you don't really need to concern yourself with that. The actual configuration of these graphics cards is quite interesting because you do actually have the ability to essentially offer a GPU per task. For example, um, one artist by the name of Kynan Stefferson, probably butchered the poor chap's name, said, and I quote, I was very impressed with the power of Radeon Pro Duo, especially in Nuke. The flexibility of being able to divide GPUs between tasks is phenomenal and represents the ultimate in multitasking. Compositing a complex shot while jumping into a 3D application to create assets, exporting it back to Nuke to then com composite some more, to then switch to Photoshop or Marry and paint a projection, load it back into Nuke and continue. Bear in mind that in the professional workspace, because of the way that users actually create content, it's not such a big deal. You don't need to worry about crossfire scaling, for example, how you would in a traditional game, especially DirectX 12 or what have you. 
So to them, this thing offers a ludicrous amount of T flops. I mean, it's very similar to let's say a high end Titan, very similar TDP at 250 watts, but a considerable amount of RAM, which is really obviously the way forward when you're creating high end, you know, offering of video content or what have you. So does this mean a damn thing for us as gamers? Probably not. I mean, I'm sure someone will definitely test out games on it to see how well it scales, but it's certainly not their design. The main reason I'm interested in this video is it actually gives us information on what the hell the Dual Polaris card was. And as I said, it had been bugging us for a long time. Now we know. So that's always a good thing. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.